and we'll get going. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just share my screen with you, and I'm going to go into Pro Tools. I'm not, I'm not saying you're not the greatest Pro Tools teacher of all times, but do you know of any, like, YouTube videos or anything that has, like, just kind of how-to, just, like, yeah, there's like a that. there's a bunch of them out there. The one there's a guy out there I really like. Um, well, I, I I I watch a lot of stuff by a guy named Fab Dupont. Okay, I'll write that down just for hell. Of it. Okay. Um, but if you just search YouTube for Pro Tools stuff, you'll find you'll come across stuff. Yeah. yeah and the I stuff the know, stuff I'm gonna. Either. The stuff I'm showing you right now is the basics that I think some of the YouTube people kind of assume you already know. Okay. So cool. I, I generally, I, I kind of give you a little bit of caution to say, you know, the, the biggest thing that I don't think they teach very well is how to set up Pro Tools from the get-go. And so that's a big part of what right. we're doing right now. And, and I'm going to- Okay, perfect. I'm going to touch on probably the most important thing. If you learn this one thing as somebody who's just playing the guitar or the bass or the drums and you're recording instruments on your own, this will, anybody you send your files to, this is going to help you immensely. So I'm going to just go into pro tools and I'm going to open that session we had going on last week. Okay. And that was, uh, we have Nick playing the guitar and Nick playing a vocal. All right. So here's what I'm going to try to teach you. And then this audio was our bounced file, which I'm going to go in and delete. And I'm going to delete it for purposes of uh, our, keeping our session kind of working as we're building a, we're building a song. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is probably, and this is a, a kind of a tricky thing to understand. And I'm going to come in here, and I, if I look at my faders over here, right, on mm -hmm. these faders, you have a scale of minus 60 to zero, okay? Okay. Now, the, the, the faders on there are not really what I would call metering, right? They're not really showing you how loud your music is. They're showing you when is your music going to clip digitally, okay? And when we start thinking about digital clipping, this is kind of the idea I want to show you here, is when we think about digital clipping, what's happening is we have our, our wave file, right? Right. And when we clip digitally, I gotta hold on, I gotta move some stuff around so I can see it. When we clip digitally, what's happening here in our deal is we're we're making what's happening. So let's say we're coming along, we're playing, we're playing, we're playing, we're playing, and then all of a sudden we hit this really, really loud note, right? Yeah. Okay. And that note is too much for the digital realm to understand, okay? So there's parameters built into these programs, and essentially what ends up happening is the computer is going to come in and go, oh, everything above that line, we're just not going to capture. Okay. Okay? And that on the, on the flip side of it, of that sine wave, it's just going to cut it off. And so what you end up getting is you end up getting a a recording that looks like this. It'll have these like right. squares on it and it sounds horrible. Just absolutely horrible. So we, we want to avoid digital clipping. So in, in Pro Tools, these meters over here are really good at showing you when you clip. So if you play too loud and you get to zero, it's gonna clip, okay? okay. So I'm gonna, to, to show you this a little bit, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna just create a, an audio track and I'm just gonna call it test, okay? And I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna, rec I'm gonna enable it. I'm gonna record enable this, okay? 
and I'm going to just take, I've got it, my Stratocaster, and I'm, I'm going to just play a basic note. Right? I'm not even, I'm not even holding a note. I'm just strumming strings, okay? Right. And what you'll see is, is that's coming up to minus 25. Right. All right? Now, in, pro, in your mm -hmm. audio interface that you're getting, there's going to be a knob next to your input that's your gain knob. Okay. Okay. And the goal is you want to get it right at about your input right at about minus 20 dB. Okay. okay. So I'm going to turn up my gain a little bit. And that's about right. And here's why I say this, because what's going to happen is what we're going to do is we're looking for when I look, when I think about my recording, and I look at an old school meter like you would have on a console that would look something like this. Right. This, this zero stand, is at zero VU, and a VU stands for volume unit, all right? Okay, right. And what that roughly equates to is minus eight, a zero VU equates to roughly minus 18 RMS. Okay. Now I'm I'm getting a little bit technical here, but what what RMS stands for is where's my hold on where'd my thing go? Uh, what RMS stands for is root mean squared, which you don't need to worry about that. What you need to know is that zero RMS is clipping in an analog world. You're overloading your speakers in an analog world. Okay. okay. So we want to get to when we record, what's happening is for our when we finish a song before it's mastered and made loud to commercial standards, we want to record to this zero VU. So if I just hit my, my strings again, I'm coming up to right about minus two minus two VU, which is about which is almost the same as minus twenty dBFS. Right. on Pro Tools, okay? okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my volume a little bit more and make it just a little bit louder so that I'm, I'm gonna peak right at zero. So right now you have, you're plugged in just your interface? Yeah, I'm running through my pedal board, but I'm, I'm just plugged into the interface. Okay. okay. And I'm just holding the C chord, and you'll see and I'm peaking right around zero. Now it's okay if you go over it a little bit, but you don't want to go over it by a lot. What you don't want to have happen okay. is this, right? I'm going to turn up my gain a little more. Okay, and I just maxed out my VU meter. Okay, but what you'll notice is that I didn't max out Pro Tools. I came to about minus 13 on Pro Tools. Now, if I turn up my, my gain even more, and I hit that red, then you heard digital clipping, right? I'm holding a C, right. that's digital clipping, and it sounds bad, okay? okay? So what I'm gonna demonstrate what digital clipping looks like in a WAV format. Okay. And this is, again, this is just for, for knowledge purposes. Oh, that's good stuff, thank you. No, this is, this is important stuff. So I'm gonna just record real quick. Okay, you'll see that this is totally, totally huge, right? right? Yeah. Now, just to illustrate what it looks like, I'm going to make it a little smaller, but you can see that the, the computer just basically cut off our wave. Right. Right? Like I was yeah. showing you earlier, these yeah. are, this peak here is not clipping, but this peak is. It just, it just cut it right off. And you want to avoid that. Okay. So to solve this issue, what we do is we're going to come in and we're going to gain. We're it's this is called gain staging, and this is really important stuff. So you're going to set your your interface so that you're going to come in right about that minus twenty mark. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm just going to play some chords and just give you an idea of of, of this. I'm just going to play it. I'm just going to strum a C chord real simply.
okay? Now, we saw that come in here, and you can see it's, an, it's a normal wave, right? Right. And I'm going to just come in and I'm for. All right. So now here's where this gets important. So I'm going to play back just this one. And I want you to watch the VU meter as I play this, this little nine second clip. Okay. Now watch it again. And this time I'm going to put a hold thing on it. So this, the hold will show us where we max out at. So we maxed out at minus one, right? Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is on this, on this thing here that says inserts, all right? Okay. Right. These are our, our plugins that we're using, and they're different than sends. So you, so you want to use your inserts. Okay, and you can have a lot of inserts. You can make it more or less, but for the most part, it's either going to default to show you four or eight. But on that very first insert, I'm going to go into my plugin list, and I'm going to go under Avid. And that, these are all the plugins that come with Avid. Uh, I have an upgraded version of it, a little more than the, the first version, but you're going to have a plugin called Trim. And we're going to grab that plugin. And if you click this little red box, it'll make sure it won't go away. Okay? So I'm going to take our, our plug, our deal here. I'm going to come back into this screen over here. And I'm going to loop play this back. So to loop play it back, you're going to go into setup, or is it options? Sorry, you're going to go into options and see where it says loop playback. It just means when I go in and highlight a section, it's going to continue to play it on loop, and it's just going to help us edit it just to, as we're listening to it. So I'm going to hit play, and I'm going to come in here with the, with the, with the trim, and I'm going to add gain to this. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's close. All right. Right. And what this well, is, it's picking this... up everything at the same amount, or what's it doing? Are Basically, doing that... on this track, on our test track, I'm adding enough gain to get me to zero. Okay. And think about I this. Mean, everything is being brought up equal amount based on that it, now it, being your it, baseline or your. It's just a. Whatever. It's just a volume increase, pre fader. Okay, because we want everything to hit the faders at the same level. Okay. All right. So now that was my example, but I'm going to go into next. I'm going to go into next stuff, and I can take these and I can just drag it up here. So we're going to take his guitar, and his, his vocal, and we're going to gain stage his his guitar and his vocal. So let's see, and I'm going to take this down to zero for him. So he recorded too low a volume. Oops. Oh, sorry. It didn't sound anything like hey Jude. No, no, no. I, I know, but it's fine. <laughs> Here you go. So let's see where he's he's gonna peak. So minus a little below minus two right now. Yeah. Okay. Little under minus oh, there one. You go. Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh. Oh, he's over. Oh, oh, bastard. All right, 
So in that case, I'm going to come in and I'm going to pull this back by 0 0.06 dB. All right, and I'll play through it again one more just to check. So we did that on the guitar. I tend to save every time I make an edit. So to me, gain staging is an edit. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to come in here and make this just for, just so I don't confuse myself and make that inactive. I'm going to take his vocal and we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to drag this down. I'm going to get rid of this guy. And I'll put that trim on there. Oops, you know, you know what? Here, we have to leave the trim on that one. Okay, we can't just move it. So we'll put it back at minus six. We're going to do another instance of trim. And I don't know if you're using a Mac or a Windows, but if you're using a Mac, if you put your hover your, your mouse over that plug-in, hold down the option right. button, and drag it, you can just drag another instance of it. Now that's yeah. going to be an exact copy of it. So we need to come in and take our gain back to zero. And then we'll come in and we will play just the Dude, just the vocal don't make it bad Ooh. take a sad song Ooh. and make 6. it 6.5 i i saw 6 plus 6.5 yeah that's what i saw 6.5 yeah letter plus 7 oh 7 oh look at that guy go <laughs> To make it better. That's be interesting. Okay, so let's come in here. Our, way. Let's come into our trim. And let's take out seven dB. Oops. Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song. And make it better. Remember to let her into your heart. Then you can start to make it better. All right. So now let's do this, Richard. Let's come back in here and let's play them together. And you'll hear the difference because now they're both going to be coming into the fader at the exact same level. Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. Now, if I take, let's say I take off this on the, that vocal's overpowering the guitar. But if I leave it at minus seven, they're very, they're nice and balanced. Okay, so let's save that. And that's gain staging. Okay, okay. and that's, that's important. So then when we come in here and we start editing our, our faders and we try to set our levels, we know that the sound coming into Pro Tools is the exact same on both tracks. Okay? okay. Got it. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to add in a little bit. I'm going to bring in another instrument and I'm going to use a, a MIDI track to do this just to example it but like I'm going to bring in a bass okay actually I'll do a kick I'll start with a kick drum because it's easy to understand and I can do it very fast but before I do that I'm starting to I'm starting to basically amass a whole bunch of tracks right mm -hmm. so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go create new I'm going to create a stereo instrument track because I'm going to do bass as MIDI. Okay. I'll put that on the right side of my guitar and vocal. And I start making stuff different colors at some point. So if you okay. click on this, this color bar at the bottom, I'll make his vocal, his guitar kind of pinkish. I'll do the vocal green. I'll make the bass brown. 
And then I'm going to add in two more. And I'm going to explore. This, is, this isn't advanced. This is pretty standard stuff. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go new stereo aux input. And I'm going to call this mix bus. OK? okay. And bring that one over here. And let's make this one yellow, just to make it stand out. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to make another new track. And this one's going to be Stereo Master Fader. And we're going to call it Master. Now, what I want you to think of the Master Fader is this is the Master Fader that's going to go out to your speakers. OK? okay. So right. if I okay. slide this up and down, it will control the volume on everything. OK? okay? But first, what we're going to do is we're going to take our guitar track. So right now on our outputs, the guitar is going to my speakers. The vocals go into speakers. And the, the MIDI is going to speakers. We're going to change that around a little bit. And I'm going to come in here on output, and I'm going to select track, mix bus. And I'm going to do that on all of them but the mix bus. And on the mix bus, I'm going to put the track out to out. I'm going to leave it as output one and two. My reason for doing this is that I'm going to put basically some at the end of the day when we get closer to done is I'm going to put some processing on this mix bus. And I'm going to try to start to emulate analog equipment to kind of give it a little bit more warmth than what digital provides. Okay. okay. All right, but in the meantime, I'm going to come back over here to our, 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 our uh, track screen. And I'm going, to, I'm going to find this MIDI bass. Okay. And have you ever played a piano? No. Do you, know really. the notes on a, do you know the notes on a piano? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. So what this little keyboard is over here is the notes on a piano, and they slide up and down. You can go all the way down to minus two octaves. So think of as you're looking at a piano, you've got another 12 key, another 24 keys to your left. And then it will go all the way up to eight octaves. And I think a piano stops at six. So you're getting an additional two octaves on the left, an additional two octaves on the right, which is really the range of human hearing. OK. okay. All right. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to I'm going to create a Actually, we're, I think I said we're going to call this a kick drum, so we'll call it MIDI kick. And I'm going to come in here to plugins, and I'm going to click on instrument. And specifically, the instrument I want is a it's is a free plugin that comes with Pro Tools. It's called Expand Two. And this is basically what it looks like. And if you just click in this area, it'll give you a list of all the different samples that you can get. So basically, this is a sample, sample instrument. And it has all this stuff built into it. But I'm going to specifically come to Drums. And then I'm going to, I'm going to select Kicks Menu. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to, oops. I'm going to select the pencil tool, which is this guy right there. And there's different types of tools. So if you cycle through that pencil tool, it'll, it'll run through different pencil things you can do. But I'm going to leave the basic one in place. And I'm going to come all to the right, and I'm going to put it on the number. I'm going to kind of come to that line that says 3 right there. And I'm just going to hit the pencil and put that right there. OK. So as I play with this, Now, 
Now, when you have a mix bus in place, one of the things you're going to have to do is see this little S here. That stands for yeah. solo. You need to take it out of, you need to make it so that it, it will play regardless of what you solo. Because if I click solo over here on the MIDI kick, anything through it won't play. Okay? So when we're going through that mix bus, to do that on Mac, you'd hold down option and then click on it. Or excuse me, control and then click. And it's going to kind of gray it out. It means you're bypassing the solo. Okay. So what we're going to do is I've got a MIDI input, a little keyboard. And we're going to, it, as you take this pencil tool and you take that little drawing that I put in place, we're going to just kind of slide it up and down the keyboard until we find a sound that we like. I like one, that works, right? So I want, I want that kick to come in on every single first note, right? Now I can come in here and I can draw it in each spot. So that's gonna happen on the two. Or what I can do is I can highlight that entire bar and I can click Control D and it will add it, it'll just keep adding that in. So I'm just going to add it in for the duration of the song. Now if I play the song back, I have a kick drum. Hey, June, don't make it bad. Right? Nice little kick. Right? So let's do this, let's do the same thing. And this time, let's add in a new, we'll add in another new track. We'll do it as a stereo instrument and this one we're going to call snare okay so i'm going to i'm going to copy this guy down here now it's still set on kicks but i want to go to i'm going to put it on a snare so now it's on snares menu and i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to find a snare sound that i like Good little snare sound right there, right? Mm -hmm. Except I don't want this on the on the first bar. Where's my snare usually land? Lands on the three, right? So, boom, tss, 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 right? So I'm going to put that snare on the three every of three. every of every beat of every bar for the duration of our song. Now, if I play it through. And let's let's for fun let's come in here and we'll do the same thing for one we'll do one more and then I'll stop on that and this will make this a hat. Yeah, you can just you don't even need any other musicians. You'll be done. Just got your own album. Well, this is this is how I work, man. I come in here and I I just do that. I mean, I have I have some other other libraries I use now, but. So you, how did you learn all this? You taught this to yourself, or somebody taught you, or you took a class, or you did this for work somewhere, or what? A little of both. Um, I dove into it, and just got to the point where I uh, got to be very proficient at it. I watched a whole lot of YouTube videos. So let's take that three. I like that one right there. And this one we're going to just put on every single beat. Now what we'll need to do at some point is we'll come in and gain stage them all so that the, they're all hitting at the same pre-fader. But now we basically have a song with a guitar, a vocal, and a drum. Hey, you, don't make it but you hear how that, that hat is overpowering us? Yeah. So what I want to do on that hat is I want to come in here and I want to add in that, that VU meter. 
and I'm going to put the trim after the instrument. So this is different. So on a on a record on a on a instrument, it'll be your your first input. On a MIDI instrument, it'll be come in right after the the MIDI instrument. Does that make some sense? Yeah. And because we recorded the MIDI in stereo, we're going to want to use a multi mono plugin. All these plugins are uh, standard plugins, or no? A, a lot of my purchased. I'm a lot of my purchased. The the ones I'm showing you are standard plugins that come with it. So let's. What about let's, the ones that you listed on the sheet? I didn't. I didn't look any of them up. Are they all just standard ones? Or you got to buy those, or what? Some of the them are wave standard. Wave CLA, Fab Filter, all that stuff. The Wave CLA is. I think you can get it for like thirty bucks. I would hold off. Don't buy anything yet. We're not there yet. No, I know. I'm just. I'm just. I know. I'm just. Just curious. All right, so I'm going to come in on the on the hat, and I'm just going to play the hat because I want to see where it's hitting. So it's actually hitting low. So to fix that, I'm going to come into the instrument itself, and I'm going to turn the level all the way up. And then we'll come in and we'll fix it in the fader. So it's still too low because I'm, I'm bouncing right around, what, 7? Minus 6.7. Yeah, basically. So I'm going to add 6.7 dB again. Or I'm going to add, pardon me, I'm going to add 5.3 dB of gain. That works. And I'm going to do the same thing to my snare. So why are those two meters reading differently? You Hold on. You're I don't know what happened, but you're you're coming in like real digital all of a sudden. You have interference or something going on? I'm going to put you on mute for a second. I'll explain the difference. So the one is your left input and the one is your right. Okay, so when they record these samples, what they're doing is they're going to take a drum, they're going to put it in a room, and they're going to put mics up on your left and right to create a stereo input. So when you have two meters, your, your stereo input on a live recorded instrument is never going to be the same. Does that make I sense? This is all digital, so I just assume you would have calibrated them or whatever. Well, and you can do that. So you can do that. You can set them up so they're the same. So if you'll notice on this VU I meter I use by Klanghelm, I can actually trim it right in the meter if I want to. I usually just come in and I, I set the level for the two because I want that difference. I want, I want that actual feel of imperfection, okay. right? We can make perfect music with, with the computer. And I mean, we can make it absolutely perfect, but what we don't, what I don't like is I don't like everything perfect because it feels like a robot. Okay. But in this case, um, let me fix the snare and then I'm going to show you one more thing to kind of go to that and then we'll, we'll stop for the night. Okay. Hey, you don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Okay, so our snare is good there. All right, so what I'm going to do next is in these MIDI instruments, I'm going to come into the hat. And over here under the hat, do you see this thing that says notes? Yeah. I'm going to click it. I'm going to, I'm going to go down to velocity. And these little diamonds are the, are the strength at which that instrument, we're simulating that instrument hitting on, on that hat. 
okay? Now, a live drummer does not hit the, the snare at the exact same <laughs> power every single time. It just doesn't occur. Yeah. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select this region, okay? And I'm going to come in here to event operations. Wow. That's okay. very formal. Like management now. Oh, yeah. Now we're in charge, buddy. We are the, we are right. the composer. <laughs> And I'm going to select change velocity. Okay. They're all set at, I'm going to take them down a little bit. So I just changed the input. So they're all set at, I don't know what they're set at, but let's say they're all set at 80. Yeah, they're all set at about 80. But over here, I'm going to come down to go, I'm going to call this randomize. Okay. And I'm, I want them, and so they're, right now they're all set at 80. I want that kind of like natural feel. So I'm going to put a limit in on them. I don't think that he's going to, that my drummer's going to hit that snare below 70. And I don't think he's going to go above 90. And I'm going to hit apply, and I'm going to hit randomize. So I'm randomizing 100% of them. Now that's very... Um, not random. Not random, right? That <laughs> doesn't look like him, but yeah. That's still not, I mean, there's a little bit of randomness there. Right. Yeah, it's a little more randomness. So, I mean, sometimes it works really well. Sometimes it, you don't have a big enough sample. Oh, that one's a little better, right? Right. So depending on how you set this thing, it'll change. That's about what I want right there. So now if I come in and play this. Starts to sound a little sure. more, a little more natural. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. kind of where I'm going to stop for the night. I've, I think I've hit you with a lot of good info, but the biggest thing, yeah. the biggest, the biggest takeaway is gain staging. Gain staging. I wrote it down, pal, right there, yep. gain staging. And when you think about, just to kind of reiterate gain staging, when you think about it, our sound is entering, when we think about our console, our, our traditional big old room size, massive console, this is this, this view right here is representing our console. The, the, right. in, the, the, the sound is coming in from the top and flowing to the bottom. Okay. So okay. the very right. first thing, the very first thing that's going to hit it is our expand. Then it's going to get trimmed out and whatever else we do to it on the plugin side. So now the, all, the order potentially could mean something. The order means a lot. Because okay, well, I know, maybe I didn't know that before until you just said that, right? It, yeah, perfect. So like on our, right. on our, on our, on our pedal board or the guitar, you may right. not necessarily okay. want to put a distortion pedal before a delay, right? It's the same kind of thing. Okay. Typic, typically, uh, now, if you want, as you start playing with this, this is what I would write down. The very first thing you want is EQ. Okay. Well, actually, the, the, the first thing you want is your, is your input, so your trim. Your, the amount of gain you're going to add to that, that, that noise. So that's number one. The second is your EQ. Then compression. Then reverb. Then delay. And then what I'm going to call saturation. What's that? Uh, sat think of saturation as coloring. And by coloring, what I mean is we're going to add kind of an analog feel to it. So like when Unless I... Unless you were talking I, about earlier. Okay. Right. When I mic up an amp, I've got a Vox tube amp, and you're going to hear 60 cycle hum, right? If I turn the volume up loud enough, you're going to hear 60 cycle hum. When I record a tube amp, you're going to hear that. If we had an analog console and a whole bunch of analog gear, every piece of gear that touches that sound is going to add some color. Just natural 
hum, if you will. Electronics, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah gotcha. With a tape machine, you're going to have magnetic, a little bit of magnetic distortion. If you, we were recording to vinyl, you'd have the, those pops of, you know, that natural, lovely warmth of a really good record, right? And so saturation mm -hmm. tries to add just a little bit of that so that it sounds like the sound we all love and not just this perfect electronic noise. So is that like random? I know we're uh, next week or whatever to talk about this, but I mean, is that kind of like randomized? That's something that the program does on its own or that's something that you kind of do, or it's kind of like the same where you're kind of fluctuating and doing different ones. Well, let me give you an example. So let's take our, let's take our, our deal here real quick. Bring the, I'm going to bring the kick up a little bit. So let's play this through once. Hey, you don't make it fast. Take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let her into your heart. So we, we get the gist of it, right? Now let me add a little bit of compression. Hey, Jude, don't make it fast. Take a sad song and make it better. It's kind of hard to hear. Remember to let her into your heart. Then you there we go. That's why I couldn't hear it. Sorry, I had to put it on the master. So let me go back. So let's go back. I've added a little bit in. Why is it doing that? Stop. Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. And it, it sounds like it's turning it up, which it is. But it's adding in just a little bit of love. <laughs> Everyone needs love. It's, it's a hard, like, and I realize that this coming through Zoom, you're not getting the full value of the sound. When you've got, you know, good headphones or monitor speakers, you can really start to hear that articulation that some of this stuff adds. And it, it does make a difference. Uh, okay. and it makes a really big difference once you master it. So, um, but for right now, just gain, if you, if you start recording your guitar and just gain stage it so that you're at about minus 18 over here. Right. Okay. And if you want a uh, really good um, VU meter, uh, I like this Klang Helm. K L A N G H E L M. And I like it because it's cheap and it does what it says it does. And it's right here, this V U M T. You don't need the deluxe version. Uh, they charge 14 pounds for this. This is out of Britain. But the, the cheapest the cheapest US V meter V U meter plug-in I can find is like $30. And it doesn't have the trim ability. You can't calibrate it. You can't you can't mess with it. This is a really, really good, solid plug-in for not a lot of money. Okay. And they have also, uh, they have some free stuff too. You'll, you'll notice as you start playing with plugins, a lot of the companies that make plugins have free stuff. So like th these guys have, here, they, this is free saturation right there. Okay. Drive, output, mix, response. And you can just you start playing with it and you figure out the town the sound you like, man. But that's uh that's what cool. I I like a lot. So Thank you. any questions for me tonight? No, I'm sure maybe I may uh hit you up later in the week because I get that stuff in. I'll or there's certainly the uh, interface, I guess the headphones and microphone. I don't know how to use those, but interface I'll be kinda interested in. 
hook that up and see how it works and all that. And then do some on my own, like you said, gain staging. So mm -hmm. be fun. Like I said, that stuff's coming on Wednesday. So I'll let you know. One thing you might have to one one thing you might have to mess with when you get your if you said your microphone's a USB microphone or it's a, a cable. Yeah, it's USB. No, it's right. USB. So one thing you might have to do is you might have to come into Pro Tools and up here in Setup, you have yeah. this input output menu. Right. You might have to add the in so it might have to go new path and then figure out where it's coming from. Right. So or USB, USB mic. Port. Okay. And then you got to figure out where it's actually coming from. And I, I'm not very good at that. Now, okay. what will typically occur is when you have your, your audio interface, it will probably pick up automatically. Um, but you may have, for your USB input, you may have to uh, mess with it a little bit. And if you, if you can't figure it out, let me know, and I will, uh, I'll figure out how to do that, and I'll, I'll tell you how to do it. But it'll be under this I.O. setting thing. All right. Cool? Yep. Cool. So I'm going to save our thing. So, yeah, you've got my email, correct? Yeah, I think so. Well, let me give it to you one more time. Okay. Uh, where's my chat function? Where's chat? Chat, 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 chat. There it is. There you go. You should have a chat window pop up. That's my email. Brian at Sage Music. Yeah. Okay. And like I said, I'm not an input output expert, but I know how to figure it out. So. Got it. That's fine. Cool. You, I got it. You're, you're focused right. You should be able to plug in. Now, when you get your focus right, uh, it's going to come with a lot of free plugins, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, you have. Um, it's not what I wanted. So if you come in here on your plugins, you'll have a menu of plugins. Right. It comes with a, a compressor and an EQ. Uh, Focusrite has a very, very famous compressor, which they've modeled into a plugin, which is this guy. It sounds great once you learn how to use it, and we'll start getting into some of that. Um, but also you, what you're going to notice is that your focus, right? has a whole bunch of other free plugins you get too. It also has an entire sample library and by sample library, I'm referring to, you'll have an entire deal of, if I can ever get to it, just various samples of things that are it, it'll be a massive folder of everything from like rain to waterfalls to chimes to loops and all kinds of just fun stuff to just start playing with. So okay. um, go through that. Their, their products are awesome and I, they're a good company. So. Okay, cool. cool. All right. All right, buddy. Hey, have, have a great week. Thanks for all your uh, time and effort you're putting into this. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, you know, I, I'm learning stuff as I go, like stuff that I, I've thought about and forgotten, and it's just reminding me, oh, yeah, I got to do that, or I got to do that. So this is good for me, too. So okay. well, I, I like it. it. All right, buddy. All right. I'll let you know if I got any issues. We'll do. Talk soon. Have a great week, bud. All right. You too. Bye. Bye.